The aim of this presentation is to explain what dyslexia is, to share how we are raising awareness about dyslexia at Cumley Park, how we support our dyslexic learners and how we are enabling positive dialogue about the strengths associated with dyslexia as well as the challenges. Underpinning all of the work we do in school are the articles from the United Nations Conventions for the Rights of the Child. Articles 28 and 29 are particularly relevant for pupils with additional support needs. We are also guided by the 17 global goals as part of learning for sustainability. The ones on screen just now are the ones which are particularly relevant for looking at children with dyslexia. We want to make sure that our young people's mental health is not negatively affected by an identification of dyslexia. We want to work together to provide a quality education by providing supports which can help to reduce inequalities. And by working together in partnership with parents and carers, with pupils, with school staff and with the wider community. Here is a little task for you to carry out. Can you say the colour and not the word? Take a few minutes. You may want to pause the video and see if you can say the colour and not the word. Can you work out what this sentence is saying? So how did you get on with the last two activities? Did you have to work any harder to work out what the words were saying when the words were written backwards? Traditionally, dyslexia has been associated with reading difficulties. So sometimes seeing letters or words back to front or taking longer to decode and process what is written, needing extra time or putting in extra effort for tasks. So whilst these two activities don't show exactly what it's like to be dyslexic, you can still get an idea about how much harder someone might be having to work or that certain tasks require a bit more time and are not as automatic as they might be for someone else. The Scottish Government definition of dyslexia is what we use in Falkirk Council and what we use at Cumley Park. There are many different areas of difficulty that can be associated with dyslexia and you can see these on the screen just now. Phonological awareness is one area, so that is trying to match sounds and letters, being aware of rhyming, being able to blend and segment sounds and words, um, being able to work out syllables and words. Sequencing and directionality can also be a challenge. Reading fluency, short term and working memory. So we have to ensure that we do not overload young people with too many instructions at once because it's difficult to remember them all. Some dyslexic learners may have difficulty with number skills, with organising resources that they require for different tasks. Some may also have difficulties with oral language skills, maybe getting muddled about what they want to say. And for some, there might be some auditory or visual processing difficulties. It's important to note that no two people with dyslexia are the same. And a dyslexic learner can have some of these difficulties, and in some cases, they might have all of these difficulties. There's no one size fits all. Dyslexia is also, as you can see in the quote below, it's described as a continuum of difficulties in learning to read, write and or spell, which persist. So, even if we've tried to put some support strategies in place, for some children who are dyslexic, the difficulties might continue. Um, so we need to be able to evidence that the difficulties are persisting. So it's not a, a one-off dyslexia assessment. We need to be able to gather evidence and information to show that these difficulties are persisting over time. Dyslexia is common. Um, statistics show that it is about one in 10 people that are dyslexic, although there are many sources that claim it could be as high as one in five. Out of those people who are dyslexic, one in four 
will have a severe form of dyslexia that might impact greatly on, on day to day life. It's quite common for dyslexia to run in families. Um, there, is a, there is now a proven hereditary link. Dyslexia is lifelong, um, but we can put in lots of strategies in place to make it very manageable. Um, and it can range from being quite mild to being quite severe. Very important to understand that dyslexia is not related to intelligence and Dyslexia is found in all different cognitive abilities. When talking with our young people at Cumley Park, we like to spend a lot of time discussing the strengths associated with being dyslexic. Big picture thinking, creativity, fantastic people skills and problem solving. These are some of the key areas that many dyslexic learners have great strengths with. We also like to highlight and talk about famous people that have been very successful um, due to their dyslexia. Lots of organisations like NASA and GCHQ are now actively seeking dyslexic thinkers because they think outside of the box, they think quite differently, and that is a real positive strength. Lots of actors and artists and inventors have been dyslexic, which just shows the creativity involved. This year, our Dyslexia Awareness Week is in line with Dyslexia Scotland's Awareness Week from the 1st to the 7th of November. Um, in the past, we have mainly focused on primary four, five, six, and seven, but this year we are looking to include primary three classes as well to help continue spreading awareness throughout the wider school. We will be doing focus lessons throughout the week. We wear blue awareness ribbons um, and we distribute these to pupils. And the blue ribbons were launched in 2012 by a, a girl called Ellie, who felt that it was important to have a ribbon to raise awareness of dyslexia. She was fed up trying to explain to her friends and her classmates at school what dyslexia was, and that it wasn't just about having difficulty with reading and writing. She didn't want to have to always explain why she used ICT to support her learning or why she had extra time for things. Another thing that we are doing during Dyslexia Awareness Week is using our valuable pupil dyslexia champions. This year we have a large group of dyslexia champions in school. They are a mixture of primary six and primary seven pupils. Some pupils in the group are dyslexic and some are not, but they want to work together to help raise awareness at Cumley Park. No one is ever made to share that they are dyslexic. It's a personal choice. But over the years, we've noticed that more and more people are happy to talk about it and are proud to be dyslexic and proud to talk about it. We had over 30 volunteers this year to give up their lunch break every week. And it just shows how caring and fantastic our pupils are. Our group this year is quite new. Uh, so we're mainly making plans, but they've got lots of great ideas. In the past, our dyslexia champions have spoken about their own experiences of dyslexia and what helps them. They've taken part in class lessons and workshops, worked with Dyslexia Scotland Young Ambassadors, and even written an article for the Dyslexia Voice magazine. It's a way to give young people ownership of their dyslexia and also enabling them to relate to other young people. An initiative that we've been using at Cumley Park over the last few years is called Mission Superheroes, and this is to help raise awareness of dyslexia. The programme was developed by two dyslexic adults, Paul McNeil and Rossi Stone, with input from the Addressing Dyslexia Toolkit Working Group, funded by the Scottish Government and managed by Dyslexia Scotland. And it was successfully piloted in three local authorities in Scotland from 2017 to 2019. Cumley Park was part of that pilot. Paul is Head of Community Development for the Scottish Football Association 
and Rossi Stone as the creator of Deco Comics. Both found school to be somewhat challenging due to their dyslexia. Rossi realised that drawing comics and characters helped him to learn really well, and that led him to create his own business of Deco Comics. Mission Superheroes is a free short programme to help particularly primary four to seven pupils learn more about dyslexia. It enables them to find ways of building on their strengths and helps them to create their own superhero characters to overcome their dyslexia difficulties. And it's a great way just to raise awareness of dyslexia across the whole school community. This year at Cumley Park, we're going to be going into primary three classes as well. It will be a softer introduction to dyslexia, more of a general chat about how we are all different, we think in different ways, and we all have strengths and things that we find a bit tricky. And that will tie in well with class activities that pupils have been looking at during our diversity week. Primary five pupils designed some amazing superheroes last year, so they will be having a chance to refresh their knowledge of what dyslexia is and they will help us design a school dyslexia mascot. Primary six and seven classes have been through the Mission Superheroes workshops before in the past, so their focus this year in Dyslexia Awareness Week will be looking at ICT tools that we can help that we can use to help. We have noticed over the years that there has been a very big positive impact from using Mission Superheroes with our pupils. Not only have they shown an increase in confidence, we have pupils talking openly about being dyslexic in school and also with their parents and carers at home. We've had pupils working together to support each other and pupils using their own initiative and creativity to make up presentations about dyslexia, to talk to their peers in their classes about dyslexia. And we have a general increased awareness across the whole school about what dyslexia is. As part of the Dyslexia and Inclusive Practice Professional Recognition Award from the General Teaching Council and Dyslexia Scotland, there was some staff training to do with dyslexia throughout last year and we have taken ideas from that training last year and put those into our school improvement plan for this year. Members of staff are also doing their own independent professional personal development looking at dyslexia. In terms of support strategies that we use in school for our learners, the bulk of support for learners is provided by class teachers in class on a daily basis. Whether that is giving a child extra time for certain activities, whether it is differentiating tasks, and that could be differentiating by giving extra support, by changing a task slightly, by giving more time for a task, by providing resources or templates to help with tasks. Things like limiting copying from the board or being provided with sentence starters or using things like speech to text or read back functions on iPads. These are all universal class based strategies that can be very helpful for learners with dyslexia. The use of ICT, we have become more and more confident each year with this. Um, pupils in primary six and seven all have their own individual iPads. We have many learners in primary five who also have an individual iPad to help support their learning. And we have invested in lots of technology for use throughout the whole school. Pupils have become much more confident using the accessibility features on iPads such as Speak Screen, Immersive Reader and so on. Um, and developing things like typing skills is also quite useful. There are lots of different things that can help dyslexic learners. Something that we use quite widely at Cumley Park is the Nessie Reading and Spelling Programme. It's important to note that it's not just dyslexic learners that use this programme in our school. It's a very effective reading and spelling tool as it's tailored to the individual to target gaps in knowledge. 
um, and it's fun and it's a game format that pupils enjoy. Some pupils might use the toe by toe reading programme. I know that some parents do this at home. Um, this is a highly effective structured reading programme that requires daily input. Some learners have something called visual stress. So about 20% of dyslexics will have visual stress. And this is where words or letters appear to bounce or move around on the page. The use of a coloured overlay can sometimes help with this. The child in the picture is using a green overlay. The colour that helps will depend on the individual. Um, and it really is a case of trial and error, but it, it won't help everyone. But for some people, a coloured overlay can help the letters or words stop moving about on the page. A reading window is also a useful tool because it focuses in on one line of text. Um, you don't need to buy anything fancy. You could use two bookmarks to just show one line at a time, or you could use two rulers, or you could make something out of cardboard that just allows the child to focus on one line of text. This helps to avoid um, a child missing or skipping lines whilst they're reading or borrowing sounds or words from the line above or the line below. Other things that can be quite helpful are accessibility features on an iPad. I mentioned these briefly before, but things like speak screen where the text is read out to you can be particularly useful. Other things like changing the background colour on a device um, is also useful. Sometimes the contrast of a bright white screen and black text can be more difficult to read. So changing the background colour maybe to a, a pastel colour can make text seem much more accessible. The use of audiobooks is a great tool for those that maybe find reading a little bit tricky. You can still be practising shorter familiar texts to help practise reading fluency. But sometimes the text that you might practice for reading fluency are a little bit simpler. And if you're wanting your child to be exposed to a more complex text, then audiobooks is a great way to go. BorrowBox is a free app that all users, all those with a Glow username can um, access. And it's free. And it's a bit like an online lending library where you can access e-readers showing the text or you can access audiobooks. So I would highly recommend doing that. The local library also has audiobooks and they have a, a different app that they use, but equally useful. The publisher Barrington Stoke are well known for producing books that are dyslexia friendly. They don't use white pages. The paper colour is a kind of yellowy off-white colour. Um, they use a dyslexia friendly font. And also there are larger spaces between the lines, which generally makes the page seem more accessible to read. If you have concerns that your child might be dyslexic, I would recommend looking over the Dyslexia Scotland information website and also looking back at this presentation. If you feel that what has been described as dyslexia is relevant for your child, then I would recommend discussing your concerns firstly with your child's class teacher. Your class teacher will then make some observations and try out support strategies. And then after a period of time, a consultation with the support for learning teacher or a referral for further support can be made. Parental permission must be given before support for learning teacher can do any assessments. Then it's a case of gathering evidence. So the support for learning teacher would do some literacy assessments and class teacher, support for learning teacher and parents would discuss any observations and we would look at class-based work. And because the government definition of dyslexia is that difficulties persist over time, we cannot just do a one-off dyslexia assessment. We need to have a comparison um, of assessments to show that some difficulties 
are perhaps persisting. And it might be that a young person has some difficulties initially, but with a bit of support, the gaps um, are closed. And it might be that they just needed a bit longer to learn a concept and are not dyslexic. But if we can find that the difficulties are persisting over time, then we might come to the conclusion that the young person is dyslexic. Falkirk Council have a literacy pathway that we follow in order to make a dyslexia identification. And that is over a period of time, starting with the class teacher observations, support for learning teacher assessments, and then finally a referral to the additional support for learning outreach team where a joint decision would be made about whether a child is dyslexic. It's very important to note that support is needs led and you do not require an identification of dyslexia to be receiving support. Um, so you might find that lots of supports are already in place. There's lots of helpful information available on the Dyslexia Scotland website. The QR code that you can see on the screen will take you to their website, but to a list of very helpful leaflets that you can download and see further information. Um, Call Scotland is also a useful website to have a look at. Um, the link on the screen will take you to, um, it's an app wheel, so it has a, a huge list of apps that can be very helpful for learners with dyslexia. So I would check that out. Um, if you have any further questions, you can also get in touch um, with the school with Cumley Park and we can try our best to answer your questions. Thanks very much for watching this presentation and I hope you have found it useful.